Hi there, all my crafty friends. I'm Donna from Mason Creations, etc. And welcome to my channel. I'm going to do a couple more coasters today, but this time I'm going to use napkins. And we'll be doing it with absolutely no wrinkles. Seriously, not one wrinkle. I'll also be doing a couple of different finishes, so stick around for all the fun, and let's make a mess! I'm going to make a tile coaster and a completely different MDF coaster. The tile, which you can get at any home improvement store, has a small bump on each side. I'm going to sand that off so I can have smooth sides. For the second coaster, I'll be using an MDF wooden blank. This and all the products you're going to see me use today came from decoupagenapkins.com, my wonderful sponsors. These little bump outs are spacers for installing these tiles on a wall or counter, but we're not doing that today, so I'm removing them with my little hand sander. They sand off easily and then I'll have smooth sides. If you don't wish to see the captions, you have the ability to turn them off. Tap your screen, go into the settings icon in the top right corner, click on captions, then turn off captions. I'm wiping off the tile with an alcohol wipe to make sure it's free from dirt and fingerprints. You want a nice clean surface to decoupage on. Now I'll give the tile and the MDF piece a coat of Polyvine Multi-Surface Lacquer. This is a great primer for any shiny surface such as glass or ceramic. I am using the dead flat finish because I want to remove the shine. This will give paint or decoupage glue a great surface to adhere to. Paint won't chip, scratch, or peel. I just love this napkin and all the beautiful colors in it. This one is going on the tile. I'm cutting out one of the squares of the napkin. This is a three-ply napkin, but I'm only going to be using the top ply with the print on it. So I'm removing the bottom two by peeling them away. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. It's cold and windy here today. It's eclipse day and the sun has been behind the clouds all day long. I'm trimming some of the napkin away so I don't have a lot of excess hanging over the edge. I'm just leaving a little bit extra. Okay my friends, it's time to put away those irons. I'm going to show you a better and easier way to decoupage. It's much easier, you won't burn yourself, and your napkin will be 100% wrinkle free. I cut a piece out of a Ziploc bag and I'm going to lay my cut napkin on it face down. Now I'm spraying it with water, a lot of water. With this technique, water is your friend. I'm very gently pulling some of the large wrinkles away. Don't worry about any little ones, we'll smooth those out in a minute. If you have any trouble moving the napkin around, you need more water. The water allows the napkin to move without tearing, but still be careful. I'm not touching the center of the napkin, only the edges. I'm brushing on another layer of Polyvine's multi-surface lacquer. I'm using this as my decoupage glue. It works so much better than the other decoupage glues out there. This goes on thinner and doesn't leave any lumps under your napkin. I'm lifting up the plastic with the napkin stuck on it, turning it over and laying it down on top of the wet lacquer. Now with a dry paper towel, I'm smoothing out any air bubbles or small wrinkles, working my way from the center outward. Then I'm lifting up the plastic and there will be absolutely no wrinkles. This will need to dry for a couple of hours before we can move on to the next step. Is 
Isn't this beautiful? Not one wrinkle. As the napkin dries, it will slightly shrink and tighten up. This will pull out any minute wrinkles that may be there. This technique leaves a truly flawless finish. The water helps the glue penetrate the napkin for a really great seal. I'm elevating the tile on a paint can so the edges aren't touching anything. While the tile coaster is drying, I'm going to work on the MDF coaster. I'm giving it a coat of Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color Drop Cloth. This color best matches the background of the napkin I'm going to use. This way you won't see the edges of the napkin. I'm painting front and back. Dixie Belle paints are so smooth and creamy and have great coverage. I'm cutting out a portion of one of the squares of the napkin and separating the layers so that I'm only using the top layer with the print. When decoupaging, you only want to use very light colors for your background paint. Napkins are very sheer and a dark color will show through the napkin. Light paint will make the colors in your napkin look vibrant. I'm removing as much of the excess background as I can and I'm using a water brush to do this. A water brush has a cartridge that you fill with water and then brush it on the napkin or rice paper. The water dispenses easily, so this is really convenient. You can find this in my description box below in my favorite tools section, just in case you wanna check it out. The water makes the napkin easier to tear. When decoupaging, you need to tear your napkin or rice paper. A torn edge is much easier to blend than a sharp cut edge. I'm using all the same processes that I used with the first napkin. DecoupageNapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more. Over 8,000 products, including a great variety of polyvine products, which are a hot ticket item right now. Three great lines of paint, Dixie Belle Chalk Mineral Paint, Clay Mud Paint, and Pentart Paints in a wide variety of colors. They are wonderful to work with and will send your order out fast. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out on orders over $50, $75, and $125. Subscribe to the newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. They are truly your one-stop shop for craft supplies. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you some links in my description box below. Notice that I only used a portion of the napkin, so this one doesn't cover the entire coaster blank. You don't have to put the entire napkin down. You can take whatever portion of the image you like. I'm going to elevate this one to dry as well, since a little bit of the napkin is hanging over. I'm delicately brushing the edges of the napkin with some of the lacquer to make sure they are all completely glued down. They're both dry now, so it's time to remove the excess napkin hanging over the edges. They turned out beautiful and there are absolutely no wrinkles. I'm using sandpaper in a downward motion around all the edges. It cuts off the paper perfectly for a nice edge. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. I'm giving them both one more coat of the multi-surface lacquer and making sure to go over the edges. I wanna make sure that nothing lifts around the edge. I'll let that dry for two hours. I gave the tile coaster a coat of Polyvine's Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. 
Don't let the name fool you. This is great for all surfaces. Polyvine makes several different formulas, and this one is heavily resistant to moisture and heat, which makes it perfect for projects that will be exposed to water and heat. All polyvine varnishes are UV resistant, so you can put your creations in sunlight without fear of fading. I'm going to give the MDF coaster a beautiful crackle finish. I'm using Pentart's Fine Line Crackle Varnish. It's a two-part system and I'm brushing on component number one. I'll let that dry for about an hour or so until it's clear. Once dry, I'll brush on component number two. This step is an amber color. Use thin, even strokes. If you get a buildup or drips anywhere, it'll show when dry. I'll let this dry for a couple of hours. Once dry, you'll see the cracks. After using fine line crackle varnish, you cannot use any water-based products. It will ruin your crackle finish. You can only use solvent-based antiques and sealers. You can use a heat gun or blow dryer for just a couple of minutes and it will give you more cracks and deepen them a little bit. I'm going to use Pentart's Antique Paste in gold to highlight all those beautiful cracks. This step makes your project look very vintage. It actually looks just like aged cracked porcelain. I'm rubbing it into the cracks and then wiping off all the excess with a soft dry cloth. Make sure you don't use a damp cloth or a wet wipe. I'm going to put a really pretty edge on the tile coaster that matches beautifully with the print on the napkin. I'm putting some painter's tape a little less than a quarter of an inch from the edge of the tile on the top and bottom. Now I'm going to paint the edges and sides of the tile with Pentart's silver paint. Pentart's metallic paints are amazing. They rarely ever require a second coat which is pretty rare for metallic paints. I'm painting a little bit of the bottom of the tile that will be seen after I add the felt. I'm only doing two sides at a time. Now I'll let that dry for about 30 minutes. Okay, now comes the fun part. I'm going to add a metallic wax rub in mint sparkle over the top of the silver. Wait till you see how pretty this turns out. The wax rub is slightly translucent, which is why I put a layer of silver paint first. I test all the products that I recommend in my videos. I won't recommend anything that I haven't used myself and prefer. If I'm recommending it, you can bet it's a great product. Each product will be listed in my description box below and will have a blue link to make it easy for you to find. Any of the links I provide are safe for you to click on. I remove the tape and I'll let this dry for a couple of hours and then do the exact same thing with the other two sides. I'm going to seal the MDF coaster with Pentart solvent paste varnish in a gloss finish. I gave it one coat, waited an hour, and then gave it a second coat. I'm going to be painting it with Polyvine's heavy duty wood varnish for the heat and water resistance. So I want to make sure my crackle finish is well protected. The best way to clean your brush after using the Pentart varnishes is with good old fashioned turpentine. I put a little in a glass jar and soak my brush overnight, then wash with soap and water the next day. After the second coat of varnish, I let the coaster dry for a couple of hours. I'm going to paint the edge of the MDF coaster with Pentart Gold Metallic Paint. This is water-based, but I've sealed it with a solvent-based varnish, so it's okay to add something water-based at this point. I'm using a sponge and dabbing around the entire edge. I'll let that dry for about 30 minutes. Now I'm going to give both coasters two coats of Polyvine's Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. I'll wait two hours between coats. 
This is what's going to make them heat resistant and waterproof. I'm using this satin finish because I love shine. Your coasters will need to cure for at least 48 hours before use. Since I used a solvent based varnish on the MDF coaster, the crackle finish is protected. So it's okay to use a water based product now. Since I'm sealing all the edges of the coasters, I elevated them on a paint jar so the edges weren't touching anything while they dried. I let them dry for about an hour and now I'm ready to add the finishing touch. I love how they both turned out. There is not one wrinkle in either one of these coasters. They turned out flawless because of the water. Which one do you like the best? Let me know in the comments. And what do you think about decoupaging with water? Do you think you'll give it a go? The bottom of the tiles are pretty rough, so I'm adding some self-stick felt to the bottom to protect my furniture. Don't forget, all of the wonderful products I'm using today can be found at my favorite place for craft supplies, decoupagenapkins.com. And I'll leave you links in my description box below. For the bottom of the MDF coaster, I have some little felt feet that I'll put in all four corners. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.